Hi, my name is Hilary Seiner, and I'm a wildlife biologist with DCR's Division of Water Supply Protection. For this video, we're going to be discussing our long-term wildlife monitoring project and specifically focusing on the small mammal side of the project. This small mammal project has three main goals. The first is to document what small mammals are present in forested areas of the watershed. The second is to monitor the relative abundance and diversity of small mammals. And the final goal is to see if watershed forest management activities have any impacts on small mammal populations. Small mammals play an important role in the ecosystem. They help to control invertebrate populations and they disperse plant seeds and fungi spores. Their tunnels provide homes for other organisms to use and they are an important food source for many predators such as hawks, owls, and fox. Additionally, due to their high reproductive rates, these small mammals respond quickly to environmental changes, which makes them an excellent study group for evaluating their response to forest management. So what exactly is forest management? Well, the forest management that has or will occur where we are studying small mammals involves cutting small forest patches that are no larger than two acres in size. Tree removal disturbs leaf litter and opens up the canopy, which increases the amount of sunlight that hits the forest floor. This helps to promote regeneration of new young trees. This is important because it helps to ensure that our forests are healthy and continue to grow for generations to come. Healthy forests in the watersheds are critical for filtering and cleaning water, which helps to protect water quality for the 3 million residents in Massachusetts that rely on the reservoirs for drinking water. Our biologists have been studying wildlife communities at 30 long-term monitoring plots on a rotating basis since 2001, but we've been intensively studying wildlife, including small mammals, at five plots annually for the last six years. In order to gather data on small mammals for these studies, we use Sherman traps, a small metal box with a spring-loaded door that are used for trapping small mammals without hurting them. We bait the traps with a peanut butter and oat mixture and also add some mealworms for the carnivores. I don't know how you do those, but if you just push it all the way to the back, then uh, the critter has to trigger the trap to get it. If yeah. you mice, when they're walking, they don't like to walk on leaves and stuff that'll make noise. So I'll try to put it next to like a, a dead branch or something on the ground so they can sort of scurry over. The reason why we have two different traps is to catch different animals. Like some are too big to go in there or wouldn't go in there, like a weasel or... It's just to remove bias, trap bias. So like something with this thing right there. I would... be connected. If you're a flying squirrel, it's easy to move through there. Okay. Then we come back the next day to see who we've captured. We do this for four nights in a row. Afterwards, all the traps are removed and we move on to the next plot. So a lot of small mammals really like the coarse woody debris, which is these fallen branches um, on the ground and they like these uh, boulders and stuff. We too. like to put the traps kind of in areas near those spots and hope that mammals will be using them um, to run along and to uh, find their way into the trap. This site is uh, has not been harvested yet, so we're still collecting uh, baseline data at this site. Uh, so we'll be able to compare things going forward once it is harvested to see how the wildlife community changes. In the five plots we've been studying since 2016, we have captured 15 different mammal species. The most common is the paramiscus species, mostly white-footed mice, but likely also deer mice. This is a paramiscus species, either a white-footed mouse or a deer mouse. This is a male. These two species are sometimes difficult to tell apart, so we just classify them under the paramiscus genus. The second most abundant are the redback voles, followed by short-tailed shrews. So what does all of this information tell us? 
Only three of the five plots we have been intensively studying over the last six years have undergone forest management, so it is still early in our study. But so far, we have not documented any significant impacts to small mammal populations from forest management. We have, however, recorded some other interesting data. For example, we saw a significant decline in small mammal abundance in 2019, likely due to the caterpillar outbreak in 2018 that devastated acorn and other small mammal food sources. We've also noted that our captures increase during evenings when we have a rain event. We still have many more years of data collection ahead in order to fully determine if forest management has any impacts on small mammal populations. So far, our findings have been positive in that we have not seen a decline in small mammal abundance. We have even seen a slight increase in diversity. Thank you for watching. Some of the wildlife footage you have seen is from a new study which uses wildlife observation cameras. Here are a few more clips of small mammals and some not so small mammals that we couldn't leave out. I hope you enjoy.